with what can we expect some realistic expectations for Manchester United entering the season obviously we know Manchester United were coming off a terrific end to last season in the fact that they won the FA Cup in their last game of the season but overall through the majority of their season they're coming off a very very disappointing season there was big question marks on whether or not there was big question marks on whether or not um uh Eric Ten Hag will stay on as manager not that he was leaving but there was a lot of rumors that he could potentially be fired and it was um it was very, very interesting in the fact that it took Manchester United a very, very long time to come to the conclusion that they wanted to stay with him. They also, I believe, um, they are, they did a whole end of, in, end of season review, and they also, in that time, were rumored to contact some other managers. And it, you know, it was clear that it was a it was a very difficult decision that they had came to. But they, you know, eventually they came to the decision, and they. Um, and they stayed on with Eric Ten Hag through this following season, diminished certain aspects of his of his role that he had amongst the team, as it was um, as it was expected. Some of the transfers that he wanted didn't really go through, like he um, like he would expect. Specifically, talking about the, like the players of Amrabat, Mason Mount, um, Anthony. That was the big one, Anthony. So it, it it was clear that it, it was clear that you know there was an issue there, and it's um it's an interesting point United if point of view United find themselves in right now perspective because United it's always you know there's always a recycle that they've been in since Ferguson left so many years ago it's always been a new cycle and each new and upcoming year it seems like the cycle restart there's a new restart to the cycle every couple of years and they never able to take that next level you know they go through three four different reboots since sir alex ferguson and none of them seem to work none of them seem to get that to that next point so it didn't work under sir alex ferguson david moyes jose Mourinho. there was a little bit good signs at the beginning but we know how that ended up and then ole gunnar Solskjaer was another cycle and then that restarted and then now ten hogs was another cycle and it came off to start it off a good start and they go all the way back down now injuries has a lot to do with it man they suffered a lot from injuries in crucial positions especially you know the center half position you know there was times that they were playing casemiro as center back next to a johnny evans that's already not just old but he was injured too there was situations where they were playing unfit center backs like Johnny Evans alongside Casemiro because they just were desperate they had no options injuries hit them left and right a really really bad injury bug there, there's no two ways about it but the performances were really really bad. even despite those injuries the performances in certain games were really really bad and they had no identity no style of play you know we see the free-flowing type of football that Ajax played under Eric Ten Hag and you don't see any of that at Manchester United you see a very boring dull team to watch that like any cutting edge and that lack any run as a form like I remember the Chelsea game where they dominated in and out and created so many chances but apart from that you know there was not much performances like that there was not they struggled against teams that you know played a lower block they struggled with the creativity of being able to break them down and then with and then with the um, with the better teams, they just struggled to keep up with them quality. Right? The other teams just used their quality better than them when it came to the better teams, the Manchester Cities, the Liverpools and all that. And it, it was a poor to watch their Champions League campaign, extremely poor in the fact that, look, you can't get out of a group with Alex Sasserai in Copenhagen. Yes, I understand Bayern Munich. That's a difficult team. That's a difficult opponent. Even though that's you know that was a weaker Bayern team. Let's just be real. But I understand more difficult opponent. Okay, but you still find yourself in a place that you're only needing to beat Galatasaray in Copenhagen. 
you know, these are teams that Manchester United, they have more quality than those two. There's no arguing it. Even with the injury bug that they went to, in terms of quality, United has more quality than these two teams. And there's no excuse for Eric Ten Hag for not being able to get to that group stage. In fact, Copenhagen, Copenhagen will found themselves in a position that they could have they could have made it easier for them. They ended up missing a penalty at Old Trafford that could, that could have gave them the win um, in the Old Trafford game. I mean... Man United, in their Champions League campaign, they were a disgrace. They really were a disgrace, and they des- and they were deservedly, they deservedly were knocked out of the Champions League because they, you know, they didn't perform to the level. The quality was not there. They went to Galatasaray, and the pressure got to the players, and they did, they didn't perform anywhere near on the pitch. They made rash mistakes. Rashford may- had got a rash red card, and it was just individual moments of just bad moments and. Again, it got to them, and then Eric Ten Hag, you know, always making excuses after the game. Just not even just, you know, in the Champions League campaign. I'm talking about throughout the season, discussing refereeing mistakes, talking about how their performance wasn't that bad, the result was worse. Just excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse, and it was really frustrating, not just for me, but a Manchester United fan to see. But they do have that caveat of despite that horrible, horrible season and some low, low moments throughout the season, there's the caveat that they finished the season remarkably in winning the FA Cup final and beating Manchester City to do it and taking away a title from them and putting and giving it to them. And also, that win also put them in the FA Cup, which is another opportunity for them that they'll have this season to reach the Champions League if they're not able to do it through the league campaign. And they actually stripped away Chelsea's opportunity to have that safe uh, to have that backup to reach the Champions League because Chelsea were going to make the Europa League as the sixth place team but if the FA Cup winner is not one of those you know Champions League or Europa League spots you take away that sixth place Europa League spot and you give it away to the and they give it to the Manchester the FA Cup winner and that, that happened to me Manchester United it is, it's unfortunate for Chelsea but it, it's how it works you know and you, you get rewarded for winning titles and that's what happened so United, it was a good end to, no, or a good final game to the season. Not a good end, but it was a good final game, end to the season. And that, that's a big win for them. And, they, you know, it allows them to enter in this Premier League season with a little bit of, you know, confidence on the back of being an FA Cup winner. You got players now that have won the trophy. But, again, Marcus Rashford, that's going to be a main determining factor on how United play. Marcus Rashford has his dips and have his downs. And they kind of follow Manchester, the way Manchester United are doing. When Manchester United are at their best, Marcus Rashford is at his best scoring goals and just being a dominant player. When Manchester United is, you know, bad... Marcus Rashford goes down with them, and he's had a horrible season. He had a great first season at United for Ten Hag, scoring goals left and right, um, just being a dominant tweaker throughout the season. The second, the second season, he's an absolute disgrace. He was a, he was a disgrace, and he has these up and downs and up and downs and up and downs that he's had his entire career. So that's a, you know, that's a bigger discussion to have with Marcus Rashford and the fact that he's just an inconsistent player. But the way the law worked, the way, it, you know, his career has gone so far, you know, it's bound for this season to be a, a successful one for <laughs> Marcus Rashford. And if he's able to be that dominant winger that he can be when he's confident, then that will be a big, big factor for Ten Hag, for United. It allows them to attack um, in multiple different ways. And Rashford, Rashford, when he's... Marcus Rashford, when he is um, confident, he's a quality, quality player. You know, it's hard to stop him running at the defense. He's vertical. He has a good nature around goal. He's a brilliant finisher. He's, 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 he has that poacher. He's kind of like a poacher. He's always at the right places at the right times when, when he's, like, on form. But when he's not on form, he, he looks like a shell of himself. He's unconfident even his passes the way his passes come off just just look unconfident and he he's 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 a really bad player and he, he whenever he's not in form so that is going to have a lot to determine with how united do i think overall in general i think the injuries all these injuries if they're able to you know go down next season i think that'll help ten hog and 
they need to find a way to build off the momentum that they had that first season get back to what they were doing that first season under Eric Ten Hag some of those players that were having a brilliant brilliant season in Ten Hag's first season like Casemiro, like Lissandro Martinez, who was, you know, the only reason why he didn't have a brilliant, brilliant season this season round is because he was injured. But those sort of players, they need to get back to it. And you always think you're way farther than what it is. I think, you know, the likes of Lissandro Martinez coming back and either Casemiro or Rashford, you know, going getting back to their first season Eric Ten Hag form, I think those little things can make a big, big difference because you're never really as far as you think. You're never really as far as you think. So I think United will have a slightly better season than they did last season. But I think there's still a mentality issue with some of these players. There is. Like Bruno Fernandes, his whinging, his whining, his crying. That's still an issue that Manchester United have. And I don't think this is a United team that have anywhere near the li- uh, anywhere near the quality or ability to compete with the likes of Manchester City. They'll be nowhere near that title race. But I think they'll have a steady progression from last season I mean they're bound to I mean it, you can't get much worse from last season and with the players coming back but yeah I think realistic expectation for them is to make the top four is to make the top four that's what I said for Chelsea last season you want progression and you want to be in the Champions League I think with the squad that United have right now Champions League is a realistic expectation but you're not really expecting far much other than that you're really not